Hello everyone. Thank you very much for coming to our event on December 2nd. We are going to talk about uh, how to work in Japan and the speaker today is Yuka who is my friend. I don't know if she's if she's ready right now for speaking to introduction. Uh, yes. Okay. Um this is Yuka, my name is Yuka Fuji, and then I'm currently uh, live in Milan. I'm originally from Japan, but currently live in Milan because for my uh, master's degree. But before coming here, um, I have been working as a recruiter for the past uh, six years. And then uh, in my case, it's a bit uh, peculiar because uh, not only uh, being in the recruitment field, but also uh, having been in charge of the recruitment overseas. Overseas means supporting uh, potential candidates outside of Japan to work in Japan. So it's a bit like um, specific, even though I have been uh, doing the recruitment for many years. And then uh, my main focus was uh, in Europe. So um, what I was doing is that I have been supporting students and in Europe, not only the students also, uh, but some who have already um, experienced and working experience, but mainly uh, I was supporting students in Europe to work in Japan and focusing on the fresh graduates. So fresh grad graduates means uh, who have just graduated from the university or who are looking for a job and then uh, will be graduating soon. So I was in charge of it. And then and I, I know that today uh, there are the participants who are not the fresh graduates or like who are not from Europe, um, I guess. So it doesn't, I mean, it's not a problem, of course. This is just my background. Um, I also have like several experiences to support uh, like the candidates from all over the world for um, the several positions. So do not worry that if you think that, okay, I'm not the, uh, the proper audience or something like that. The first? Okay, uh, my name is Marcello, I'm from Italy, and uh, from January, I will go in Japan. I uh, became a um, uh, Japanese student, so I'm, uh, I, I'm interested uh, in, uh, for example, uh, uh, part-time job, because uh, I will be a student. But uh, I'm interested in this uh, topic, of course. Okay, good. So, Alberto Quintero. Uh, I'm Alberto Quintero, and I'm from Mexico, uh, living in Guadalajara City. And uh, I'm, uh, I'm uh, a translator, inter interpreter in Mexico right now for a Japanese company, and I'm looking for uh, doing translation for video games in Japan. And I'm searching for that kind of positions or uh, teaching Spanish in Japan. That's my goal right now. Nice. All right. I'm also from Mexico. I am a graphic designer. Uh, I have a great admiration for Japanese culture. And I had a chance to go there about four years ago. And I, uh, and I really like it. And so that's why I'm trying to get a job there. So this is the introduction video of the Japan. It's not related to uh, Japanese working culture or whatever, but just wanted to share with you this for the wrap, um, warm up. <laughs> Difference 
in the career development uh, between Japan and other countries, and also the working culture and the requirements, for example, which level Japanese uh, would be required to work in Japan and the situation for working visa. And then, uh, okay, then how to find it. And then finally, the Q&A. So first of all, uh, starting from the difference in career development. And I created uh, this slide specifically for someone who are the fresh graduates, but now I understand uh, some of you have now working or already have uh, several experiences. So I will try to fit the contents to you. But uh, this is, for example, all major welcome, the job description not specified. This um, concept can apply to, uh, basically this can set uh, to the Japanese uh, traditional company. So even though you're not a fresh graduate, uh, I think that would be uh, important for you to understand the concept um, for this. Okay, starting from the old major welcome. So it's about the, so when you are looking for a job, for example, in your country, I think the situation differs depending on the country, but I've heard, um, especially uh, from students from Europe, that uh, what you study at the university really matters to your uh, career development or career selection. For example, okay, if you're measuring in marketing, you need to, uh, not the mandatory, but like you basically search for a job related to marketing. Or if you study, for example, engineering, uh, basically you'll be searching for a job in engineering field. And I think uh, most of the countries outside of Japan follow this discipline, um, even though that was kind of not the mandatory, but in Japan, um, more specifically, they don't care about what you studied at the university. So basically, all major welcome means whatever you study, you can be anything after graduation. But of course, for some specific positions like engineering positions, you need to I mean, you basically, you have to know something related to engineering. Otherwise, you know, uh, you can't, for example, like do the coding or whatever, but for the, for the specific engineering position, of course, you have to measure the engineering in the university, but for other position, it doesn't matter if you're a fresh graduate, but if you have already, of course, a working experience, of course, your experience, um, they, don't care about the what you study at the university but your work and experience really matters because this is something uh, related to your uh, company's expectation to you so of course uh it's related but for fresh graduates what you studied uh it's actually doesn't matter uh to what to do in the company and then for the job description not specified is that it's i think it's like specific uh, in Japan is that uh, they don't have uh, detailed job description. And then they have kind of, for example, like the position, uh, which is really vague. For example, they have, okay, this is the business position. This is the engineering position or something like that. So they don't specify what you do uh, when you apply to the company, if you're a fresh graduate. So for example, if you're applying to business position, uh, you will be notified what you would do uh, only after you enter the company. So you are not so sure whether you are assigned to marketing department or like sales department, you can't know before uh, entering the company. But at the same time, uh, there have the system which is called job rotation system. So not only, for example, even though you are assigned to the marketing department at first, there will be highly possibilities that you'll be able to experience another division because their expectation is to for you to be the person who can contribute the company for long. So why? It's actually related to the next slide. And this is also something, um, it doesn't matter if you are fresh grads or like uh, you have already some working experiences, is that the Japanese company have the concept that which is called lifetime employment, uh, which means once you get to into the company, the company cannot fire you. This is a concept. Of course, you can quit if you don't want to work with them anymore, but the company cannot fire you. 
this is a life uh, until the retirement. The retirement will be around 60 or 65. Uh, so this is also the really specific uh, system in Japan. And then mainly this concept will be applied to um, traditional Japanese companies. So if, if the company is really new or a young startup company or foreign company in Japan, they don't um, apply to the system, of course. But in some cases, even though there are the foreign companies in Japan or startup, they kind of uh, took some essence from this uh, concept, which traditional Japanese company have been using. So I think that to knowing the concept would be really important. And then why I explain this here is that, so why the job, job description is not specified is that, so the company, but mainly of course, the traditional Japanese companies, uh, they will expect you to work for the company for a long. So for them, they think that, okay, it's not necessary at the moment to specify for this person to do this specific job because they have uh, like tons of time at most like 40 years to work for this company. So it, there are tons of time. So they are really uh, ready for, for example, for you, how can I say, like training, like educate you or like to like offer the, uh, the chances for you to experience a lot of things in one company. So that's why they thought that, okay, it was not necessary to specify your job description at the time you enter the company. So that's the concept. And then that's why when you enter the company, this is a cap, this part, when you enter the company, if you're a fresh graduate, they will put more uh, importance on um, character or motivation or like who you are rather than asking your skills and experiences. Because as I told you, they know that they assume that uh, you will have a uh, tons of time to spend in the company. So you will have a um, long time to learn new things and experiences of several uh, divisions. So rather than knowing your skills and experiences, they will focus more on your character or motivation. Motivation means, okay, why you would like to work for this company or something like that. But of course, if you already have the working experience, your working experiences really matters. So of course, not only ex um, explaining them about your um, character and motivation, but also what you have to explain what you can do and how you can contribute to the company by using your skills and experiences in the past. And then another uh, concept will be this one. The longer you work, the more you earn. This is also applied to Japanese traditional company is that so once you get in the company, they will not pay you a lot. But as you, longer you work, the longer you work, you'll be able to get more. So which means it's sometimes sounds unfair for some people because whatever you achieved and then, for example, if you see some like people who are older than you or or like higher position than you, but like they have not achieved anything, for example, if you see this, but the company will not pay you more than them. So this sounds like a bit unfair, but at the same time, it kind of makes sense because um, most of the traditional Japanese companies apply the system, which is called uh, lifetime uh, employment, as I told you before, that because they would like to um, have employees think kind of advantage to stay in one company kind of like forever. So if you know that you be paid a lot, if you stay longer, uh, they can think that it kind of like advantage for them to stay longer in one company. So that's why like, um, that's how it works, you know, this system. And then I remember that I got the question from one of you, I think that what would be the average salary in Japan? So I put this comment here. This is just about the average starting salary. So if you already have the uh, some experiences, they will of course consider this. But uh, the starting salary is, I mean, starting salary means starting salary for fresh graduates. So if you already have some experiences, you be paid more. But basically I can say, oh, sorry, I just wrote it in euros, but basically I can say that between 1500 to 1600 euros per month. So, okay, is it expensive or not? You know, because it depends on your country's average. 
But I think it's not that, I mean, thinking about the Japanese, you know, the price, um, it's not that uh, expensive. Um, but the good things uh, for working in Japanese company is that they will offer you not only this salary, but also the benefits. What does benefit means is that they will offer you, for example, like insurance, and they sometimes will pay you the rent. For example, like, okay, the company will pay you 70%, uh, sorry, 70% of your rent per month, or like they will offer you, for example, um, it's not that like uh, financial related, but they will have uh, offer you a lot of paid holidays. I think um, there's a you know, typical image for Japanese people that they will work a lot. But at the same time, actually, uh, it's true, we work a lot. But uh, another factor is that we will actually have the holidays, uh, like including the national holidays and paid holidays, we have a lot because uh, the company will offer you uh, this kind of like right to use the holiday. So not only the salary the company will provide you, but also the other benefits will be included. So I think it's one of the um, positive aspects to work in Japan. And then, sorry, I realized that I will have only 10 minutes left. So a little bit like uh, trying to skip thing, but like working culture a little bit. So if you have already uh, been in Japan once, probably you've been seeing this kind of thing, you know, like bowing each other. So yes, uh, what I wanted to say here is that um, we have a really like hierarchical uh, the culture, for example. I mean, especially in a working culture, and this is one of the examples. I'm not so sure if you have ever heard of this. So in Japan, in working environment, there are a lot of rules which are related to the hierarchy. For example, uh, it matters sometimes uh, where to sit in the meeting room, even though the meeting itself, the internal meeting. For example, let's say that, okay, this you know, picture show the one room and then the center is the table. And then the left corner, you can see the door so where you think um you don't have to answer but like let's think okay where where exactly that the highest position of the person like the boss should sit i don't know like for you okay it doesn't matter but in japan for some companies mainly for the traditional one it really matters so for example this is the answer so the highest position person should be the place uh, which is farthest from the door they need to sit down here and then you can see the number here this shows the order who comes next so if you or your team is like four people and then the uh, senior manager is the top manager senior associate and associate and then okay the senior managers is here the manager here senior associate here so associate here so this kind of rules, there are a lot of rules like this not only the meeting room but also for example where to sit in the taxi where to stand in the elevator. For me, it's really like um, time consuming, honestly speaking, to think about it, but this is the reality. Uh, there are uh, tons of like, you know, rules in, because there are no, how can I say, no explanation. This is something that you can, um, how can I say, feel that, okay, probably, you know, this is a culture, so you have to fit in. That's kind of like uh, most of uh, difficult things to uh, realize that how the Japanese working culture works. But at the same time, even though we are living a really hierarchical uh, society, um, we have a lot of like a drinking party after work. So in that occasion, um, sometimes it depends on the company or the culture, but sometimes those structure like hierarchical so structure can be, quite bro I mean, we have the kind of um, the shared concept that uh, in the drinking party after the work, this like structure can be broken or something like that. I can um, explain you more detail if you're interested in. But yeah, I, what's interesting for um, mentioning about the working culture in Japan is that we um, kind of like, you know, both side, we are so polite or so uh, hierarchical, but at the same time, we can be a really casual at a drinking party and then after that, for example, you know, they even like sleep in the train, go back to um, the house. So like there are, I mean, Japanese people can be the concept of really polite and serious, but at the same time, we have the different like um, side.
that being really casual, be really close to each other, or something like that. And then moving to the next topic, the requirements of working visa, is that. So uh, this is one of the most frequent, frequently asked questions while I was working as an international recruiter. So how much Japanese level required to work in Japan? So I put this a uh, JLPT2 or upper level, but of course uh, it doesn't mean that it's mandatory for you to speak in Japanese all the time. But um, if you, for example, like if you're looking for a job in engineering position, there are actually a lot of positions which doesn't require any Japanese. But for the other positions, uh, basically Japanese level really matters. Of course, you can find a job which doesn't require any Japanese, but if you can speak in Japanese, it can broaden your possibilities. So, and then when it comes to the Japanese level, which is required to work, is that, um, so probably you have ever heard of JLPT, I don't know. So this means uh, Japanese language proficiency test. This is kind of the test that um, the Japanese uh, learner who are studying Japanese will take it uh, to see their level. And then, um, so there are, I think, three and a four, five levels in total. And then we, Japanese companies will consider JLPT2, which is uh, the second level, or the one, one or two. This can be considered as a business level. JLPT3, I think it can be the conversational. So it's better to have the upper JLPT, but ideally JLPT1 level. So it doesn't mean that you have to have the certification from the JLPT test, but you need to have um, the language level equivalent to um, upper JLPT2 or, I mean, JLPT1 or 2. And then working visa. I think this is actually the positive information for you is that to get a working visa in Japan is not that difficult as long as you get the offer from the company because um, the company who gave you an offer has to be a sponsor for you to get a working visa. So, and then there is actually the number like here. So over 90% of the visa application and working visa application for foreigners are accepted by the immigration every year. Then probably your concern is that, okay, what happened to another 10%? is that uh, sometimes the immigration will not accept your application just because of the company you got the offer is too small and then are the less information than the other uh, companies, for example. In that case, if ever the immigration thought that, okay, this company was not trustable enough to um, give them permission to have the foreigners, you know, because there's also the um, possibility that the company has a risk to, for example, fire the foreign employee just because of their problem, you know, the company's problem. Um, so just to see, you know, to be sure that, okay, this company is really okay to hire someone from foreign countries. So in that case, they will like reject your application. But basically, once you get the offer, you can work. I mean, you can have the working visa. And then as for the duration of the working visa, it's maximum five years. So I think there are three types of working visa, one year, three years, or five years, and the maximum five years. And then the difference between one or three and five, uh, whether you can get the five years or three years and one year is depending on the company size. So if the company you get an offer is really small, probably starting from one year. But the thing is your working visa is can be updated um, so basically, as long as you are still working the company, you don't have to worry about it because it can be updated like uh, whenever you want. Yes, and then the finally, okay, how to find a job is that, yeah, it's kind of like a basic, okay, you can of course directly apply to the company, but my recommendation is uh, the user recruitment agents. So because um, there are, I will show you, Sorry, it's not the, probably it's difficult to see, but there are uh, several uh, recruitment agents which are specifically supporting uh, non-native Japanese. So of course you can apply directly, of, for example, okay, you would like to work in Sony, for example, and then you can directly apply to the Sony. 
But the, this is a little bit tricky because if you apply directly to the company, which means they will see um, you have to take that, for example, sometimes exam or interview, a same standard as Japanese native. So of course it can work for some people, but uh, if you use the recruitment agents specifically supporting foreigners, uh, they have like specific positions for non-native Japanese speakers, or sometimes this position doesn't require some like selection process, which is the same as Japanese people. So I would always recommend to like look for, um, I mean, consider the possibilities to use the um, agent because they have more positions uh, specifically targeting for uh, foreign candidates. So I just put the only the four examples uh, of like most kind of like common or like a famous, uh, as far as I know, one that actually the Hayes, this is the one of the biggest uh, global recruitment companies, but other three is the small, but I think uh, they are trustable. And then actually this Connect job is my previous company. <laughs> So, uh, and then good things to use the recruitment agent is that not only to, um, for them to give you the uh, position specifically for following candidates, but also um, their consultants, career consultants are English speakers. So sometimes uh, they can have the, um, they will speak on other languages to support you. So yeah, no, if you're considering to work in Japan, not only consider to directly apply to the company, but also I would recommend you to use this kind of agents to take advantage, you know, to your background uh, by using this uh, kind of recruitment agents. Sorry, I think I talked a lot, but this is basically the all everything about my presentation. So now if you have any questions or doubts, I'm really happy to answer.